Welcome back everybody to part 20, the finale of our Unity Beginners tutorial series. It's time to dot the I's and cross the T's as we bring our projects to a close for you to go ahead and show off to your friends and family. I hope you're all sitting comfortably. Let's crack on. To close out our project, all we're going to do is address the two major issues in our final scene as follows. Number one, when we defeat the boss, his eye is still wide open and he's able to track and shoot at us, which is most undesirable of course, as there's nothing more gutting than being hit by a stray shot off screen after defeating the boss. Which brings us to number two, we need not bother fighting the boss at all in order to succeed, as we can avoid the boss completely and head straight for the goal which throws any and all challenge right out the window. But fear not, with a few simple lines of code, we can fix these. Our solution is simple. We're going to make it so that when the boss is defeated, two things will happen as seen in the intro. His eye disappears, making it look like he closes it, and the goal will appear as a reward. We're going to do all this in the boss controller script, so let's go ahead and open it up. The first thing we're gonna do in the boss controller script is make a reference to the enemy HP script for we need the boss controller to read this bool is dead. For when is dead is true, the boss controller knows he's no longer alive and kicking, therefore we can initiate what we want to happen. So go back to the boss controller. Underneath private float shot timer, we are just gonna put private enemy HP to match the name of the enemy HP script and we're gonna call it boss HP. Now, when the boss is defeated and it can read is dead is true, we've said we want two things to happen, and those are that the eyeball game object disappears and that the goal pole, the flag, appears as a reward. So we're going to now need to make a reference to those two game objects just underneath. And we'll do the first one as a private game object capital G, capital O, and we can call this one eyeball, for the eyeball of course. And then underneath, we'll do another game object, but this time it will be a public game object, and that'll be our goal pole, our flag. With our references in place, we now need to call upon them within the script. And we're gonna do that in the start function. So underneath, shot timer, let's start with our enemy HP script, so let's type in boss HP, and that's gonna equal the transform of the child game object for the enemy HP script is attached to that. And we've used this before, so we're gonna say transform dot get child. So it's gonna get the child object that's attached to our boss game object. And in the brackets here, we're gonna put an ID number which refers to where that child object is in the hierarchy. For example, if we go to our boss game object, the first child game object is the hurt box, which is great, that's what we need, because that is what has the enemy HP script. Now, in programming, the first number is zero, not one. So the hurt box has the ID of zero, and the boss I has an ID of one. So in that bracket, we're gonna put the number zero. So it knows it's calling the first child game object within our boss game object. Specifically, we want the enemy HP script. So after the brackets, put dot get component. And inside the pointy brackets, we of course are gonna put the enemy HP. And at the end, we can close it with open close brackets and a semicolon. There we go. Then underneath, let's do the exact same again, this time for our eyeball. So let's type eyeball equals transform dot get child. And in the brackets, it's ID, it's index number, which we know as it's second in the hierarchy of our child game objects on our boss, it's gonna have an ID of one following on from zero, which is the first number, the top one in the hierarchy. 
And after the brackets, we can put dot game object, this time with a lowercase g and a capital O. Now I will just say, I've done it in this particular order to match the order of the child game objects in the hierarchy on my boss. So I have the hurt box at the top and the boss I second. If they're not in that order, don't worry. You can drag and arrange them to suit mine. Or if you're feeling confident enough, all you gotta do is just swap the values around. So whatever's at the top will have an index of zero. Whatever's underneath will have an index of one. And finally, we have our public game object, the goal pole. We can make a reference to that in the inspector as it is, of course, public. And now it's time to make the magic happen. But before we do, we need to do one more very important task. And that is to go back to the enemy HP script and change this bool is dead from private to public because we want another code, our boss controller, to be able to read this. So the information needs to be made public. Save that, go back to the boss controller, and in the update function now, we're gonna write a new if statement, and it's gonna say if, and in the brackets, the boss HP dot is dead. There we are. Well, what do we want to happen? In our curly brackets, we're gonna say destroy. And inside the brackets, what do we want to destroy? The eyeball, of course. So let's type in eyeball. There we go. And underneath, let's make our goal pole appear. So let's type goal pole dot set active in the bracket true. This is because we are gonna make the goal pole deactive in our scene. And when the boss is defeated, it will then become active and appear like magic. Save all that now. Let's start wrapping things up and head back into Unity. Well, this is it, the final few moments of our Unity Beginners tutorial series. It's been an absolute pleasure to have produced this for you all. I'm glad so many of you have enjoyed it and have taken your first steps towards your game dev journey. Should you need a refresher on how to complete any task within this series, please refer back to the older videos. For example, my boss is already animated and set up, so should you need a refresher on how to do that, please refer to part 15, Enemy Death Animations. With that, let's now bring this project to a close. So select the boss, in the inspector, make sure under boss controller, we have goal pole, where it's asking for a game object. That of course is gonna be found in level. Find the goal pole. When you do, select it and deselect the checkbox to set it as inactive. And then go ahead and drag the goal pole to the space that's asking for it, just like so. Also, perhaps this is your final scene, your final level. If it is, let's update our victory screen while we're here. Set it as active so we can see it. We can change the text there. I'm gonna make mine say, awesome, just like that. And if there's no level to progress to, we won't need our next level button. So let's deactivate that and then go back to deactivating our victory screen. Let's crack a save, hit play and experience our final level. And there we go, straight away, you can see the goal pole no longer appears. So we can't just cheese and cheat the boss for a quick and easy victory. So let's fight him. That was a nice double hit. Don't like getting stuck in a corner. There we go, boss is defeated. The flag appears and that's our game completed. Or it could be if you wanted it to be. Remember the part when I said this is the finale of the series? Well, I lied. As a token of my appreciation for all your support, I'll be extending this series with a small number of bonus videos covering some of your most popular requests, like how to add a double jump, for example. Please do look forward to those soon. I'd like to thank you all once again for stopping by and checking out our content. I hope it has been enjoyable for you, every bit as much as it has been for me in making them. There are plenty more tutorials in the works, plus live stream coming soon. Until then, go forth, get creative, have fun, 
and I'll see you soon. Take care.